Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the TBS Unify EVO VTX, probably the most advanced VTX that currently exists. In this video I'm going to go over its features, show you how to set it up, and measure its output strength. First of all, in terms of specs, the TBS Unify EVO features a built-in OSD. It supports 37 channels after being unlocked. It has selectable output strength of 25, 100, 400, and 800 milliwatts and it's using the new Smart Audio 2.1 protocol. The Unify EVO is using a UFL antenna connector and a UFL to SMA adapter is already attached to it and secured using two screws and a heat shrink. Next to the antenna connector over here, you can find a built-in microphone, which you can also disable for the settings of the Unify EVO. And as far as I know, this is the first VTX from TBS that features a microphone. On the right side of the VTX, you can find two LEDs that are going to indicate the channel, band, and the output strength. This button that will enable you to manually configure the VTX and also to unlock it. A micro USB port, which is a first, that will enable you to update the firmware of the Unify EVO and also to configure it for the TBS Agent X app. And finally, on the bottom, you can find two connectors. The main one is going to be connected to the power source, flight controller, or TBS Crossfire receiver, if you'd like to configure the VTX for the Crossfire protocol. And the smaller one is going to be connected to external accessories. Along with the VTX, you're getting the appropriate harnesses. And you also have the option to solder the wires directly to the bottom of the VTX, which is a good backup plan in case one of the connectors break. The button pad on the main port is the VCC in and the walking voltage of the EVO is between 7 to 26 volts so you can power it directly from LiPo batteries between 2 to 6 cells. Then you can find the ground, plus 5 volts out, ground and video in for the camera connector, Crossfire TX1 and Crossfire RX1 for connecting it to a Crossfire receiver. And finally on the second port you can find ground, RX2, TX2 and plus 5 volts out and this port will enable you to connect the EVO to external accessories for displaying telemetry data on the OSD. The weight of the Unify EVO is 7.7 grams, so it's heavier than the Unify Pro V3, which weighs 4.9 grams, and also heavier than the Pro HVSE, which weighs 4.3 grams. Its footprint, however, is very similar to the Unify Pro HVSE, and its outer dimensions are 22.9, by 31.8 by 6.6 millimeters. Now I've got the Unify EVO powered up and as you can see the OSD is overlaid on the screen. So over here you can find the call sign, then the band and channel, the output strength and the voltage of the battery that is connected. In order to configure the VTX you can use the manual button so long pressing it is going to take us to the menu. Short pressing the button is going to toggle between all the available options and if you want to move to the next selection, you need to long press it for about 2 seconds. By default, the VTX is unlocked to 25 milliwatts, so if you'd like to unlock it, you need to be in the band selection mode and then long press the manual button for about 20 seconds. Once the VTX is unlocked, the red LED is going to flash 3 times, which is going to indicate that the VTX has been unlocked. Now the VTX is unlocked and you can toggle between all the available power options. For this menu you can also set the temperature limit which is probably going to throttle down the output power of the VTX. By default it is set to the maximum value which is 105 degrees. You can also turn on and off the PID mode. You can set the data port to Crossfire which is going to enable you to configure the VTX through Lua script on your Crossfire device. You can set it to Smart Audio and then you'll be able to configure the VTX through Betaflight, but you have to make sure that your flight controller is flashed to Betaflight 4 in order to use this feature because it's using the Smart Audio 2.1 protocol. You can also set it to PWM switch and then you'll be able to configure the VTX by connecting a PWM signal to the Crossfire RX1 port and then when the signal is going to be set from low to high, it's going to simulate a press of the configuration button and when the signal is going to be set from high to low, it's going to simulate the pressing of the button. You can also turn on and off the microphone and by default it is set to off. You can change the OSD color to black and you can also turn it off. And finally you can enable the external port and for now using this firmware the only available option is current sensor. So if you're going to connect a current sensor, the current is going to be displayed on the OSD. 
If you are going to change an option, it's only going to be saved once you are going to quit this menu, which is done by long pressing the button when you are in the last option. So for now, for example, the settings are going to be saved and it's going to switch to Band E, as you can see. In order to update the firmware of the VTX, you will need to use the TBS Agent X app, which will also enable you to configure it. So what you need to do is to simply connect the Unify Evo using a micro USB cable to your computer. Then it's going to be powered up and the TBS Agent X is going to discover it. In order to enter the settings, hit manage and under device, you will find options that will enable you to set the VTX. And in addition to the settings that you've seen before, you can also set the call sign. In order to update the firmware, hit the firmware tab. And as you can see, the latest version is 1.05 and I'm running version 1.03. So I'm going to hit update. It took about 45 seconds and now the TBS Unify Evo has been updated. Now after the VTX has been flashed to the latest version, you'll be able to find a couple of more options under the settings. So first of all, under general, you can find GPS related settings. And over here, you can find a new tab, which is the channel map, which will enable you to enable or disable the stick menu. And uh, this is going to be useful if you're going to run the VTX without a flight controller, for example, on a wing. And then you can simply open up the menu and configure the VTX using the sticks of your radio transmitter. So you can configure the roll, pitch, throttle and your channels through this menu. Another very cool feature of the TBS Unify EVO is the ability to set the frequency and the output strength using barcodes. So I've printed all the available options from TBS websites and you can also use third party apps. So for example, this is a web app that will enable you to set the power then the band and the channel. After that, you can just use the camera as a barcode scanner. So for example, now I'm going to scan the Air 5 25 millivolt barcode. And as you can see, it just changed the channel. And if I'm going to scan the Air 1, you can see that now it's back to Air 1 25 millivolt. Now I'm going to use the app. So for example, now I'm going to set it to F1 100 millivolts. You can see it was recognized and now the VTX was set to 100 millivolts. In a similar way, you can also set it to the maximum output strength. And as you can see, now it was set to 800 millivolts. So this is a very impressive feature and it's going to be usable probably especially for racing. So everyone can get his own sticker, scan it, and it's going to be ready to go. As far as I know, this feature is not compatible with every camera, but I've tested it with a couple of Foxeer and Cadex cameras and I didn't encounter any issues. Now I'm going to measure the output strength of the VTX. When it's set at 25 mV on L1, I'm getting around 28 mV. On E1, I'm getting around 25 mV. And on R1, I'm getting around 20 mV. When the VTX is set to 100 mV, on L1, I'm getting around 90 mV. On E1, around 89 mV and on R1 around 90 millivolts as well. When the VTX is set to 400 millivolts, on R1 I'm getting around 430 millivolts. On E1 I'm getting around 390 millivolts. And on R1 I'm getting around 400 millivolts. Finally, when the VTX is set to 800 millivolts, on R1 I'm getting around 790 millivolts. On E1 I'm getting around 770 millivolts. And on R1, I'm getting around 790 millivolts. So overall, the Unify Pro pretty much delivers what it promises. And I'm really looking forward to see how it's going to perform when I'm going to test it outdoors in part two of this review. As always, if you have any questions about the TBS Unify Evo, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos. And goodbye.